I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining me on these airwaves. Uh, we have an exciting show. We're going to talk about some mentoring and some other great things that this phenomenal young lady to my left, uh, who will be sharing some of the things that she's gone through and her journey of success. Um, so let me take up no more time <laughs> um, to introduce you. I want to read a bio. Uh, to my today's guest is Latanya L. Garth, Motivated to Change Lives. I just love that. Because that's what life's about. That's, that's what it takes, um, people encouraging and uplifting um, others. Yes. And that's really what my show is about. Inspire, uh, the show's goals is to, are to inspire, encourage, and educate oh. those viewing listeners. Yeah. So you're right on point. <laughs> <laughs> Motivation to um, encourage the lives of people who desire to change. Latanya's objective is to help people save their own lives. Her core beliefs focus on opportunity, commitment, leadership, integrity, and education. Latanya received her bachelor's degree in communications and master's degree in higher education from Michigan State University. She is a true advocate for higher education and works on the executive management team as a business community liaison for the United States Department of Labor with the Detroit Job Corps Center. In addition to her role in executive management, she serves as the founder and director of a nonprofit organization the Imagine Mentoring Program. She strives to encourage teenagers and adult learners about the importance of education and mentoring. Latanya works as a business consultant, facilitating training and development workshops to help companies and future entrepreneurs accomplish their business goals. Latanya is also very committed to working to advance the knowledge and transform the lives of others in the metro Detroit area. How critical is that? <laughs> she is very committed in her involvement in the community and partners with several successful women, men, and organizations to break the barriers, catch this, of low self-esteem, and to help young people become better at the way they carry themselves with the intention that they can take all they have learned and help someone else along the way. Her specialties include motivational speaking, mentoring, branding, and marketing, training and development, business consulting, and personal coaching. Now you know who my guest is. That says a lot. Join me in welcoming Latanya L. Garth. Welcome to the DKD True Talk talk show. Thank you for having me. Yes, I thank you for accepting the invitation. So let's talk. Uh, God, we've said a lot. And you're, how old are you? You know my machine? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> 36. 36. So in your, thir in your 36 years of life, I mean, listening to your bio, you have accomplished a lot. And I can't say all has been an easy road. Would you say that? I wouldn't say I mean, that. you did it just drop in your lap no. and, you know, you just made it happen. <laughs> nope. You know, and I think what's important uh, with all the guests that I've had on here who have really been successful um, at what they do. Um, they're living their dreams and doing very well. And I think it's important that to bring exposure to those people. Um, it, it educates me as well because had I not been, well, you like family, so, but had I not been watching you and following you on Facebook, I might not have known all the things that, one, that you've accomplished, and then two, about your mentoring program. Um, and a lot of people talk about mentoring, um, that they have all these various mentoring programs, and, you know, they pull a group of kids together, or they meet with them maybe once a month, and then it dies off, and, and that's not fair to the children or the people that you are providing mentoring services uh, to. But to hear about yours, it's not just focused on children, but it's focused on young adults as well. Mm -hmm. And I have seen you in the community doing some great things, speaking on college campuses, uh, developing um, symposiums that address self-esteem, broken relationships, uh, and just a lot of things in your 36 years of life. Okay, so um, I want to turn, you know, I want to know, like, who is Latanya Garth? How did you get to that point, to this point? Well, I believe life experiences got me to this point. And I certainly believe that, 
you know, adversity is one thing that will shape you into the person that you're ultimately designed to be. And so when we go through adverse situations, it makes us get to a place where let me dig in and serve others. Because if I serve others, then I know once I serve others and start talking and finding out the things that they're dealing with, then really do my problems really exist? Yeah. Or can I take time out to really help somebody through what they're dealing with? And then knowing that I can do that, it just kind of, the things that I experience kind of subsides because it's like I'm digging in to help somebody else along the way. That's phenomenal. You. And, you know, oftentimes people will say, you've not experienced what I've experienced, so you really don't know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's true, and sometimes it's not. Um, I think that we can learn through other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. If we have gone through things, yes, we can, we're able to speak to it, you know, but everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to go to jail to say, oh, I experienced jail, and now I can talk to people who are reentering into society, are returning citizens to be able to help them along the way. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have to be in a domestic violence relationship to say, oh, I can relate. However, I may know people who have gone through those things, counsel with people through my career, uh, where I can share not necessarily their stories or parts of their stories as to how they made it through, mm -hmm. you know, and able to move a step further. Just well, the things that we go through are not for us, it's for somebody else. It, and so, yeah. you know, even in, yes, even in my time of mentoring, um, I've found young women that I've talked to in their situations that I can't relate to at all. So that's why it's important to have a team of people, you know. And so um, the criteria to become a mentor on my team is just to have life experience. So it doesn't matter what, t what your educational level is. It matters if you have the desire to be a true servant. And so that's the goal, you know, because all of us have stories. All of us have things that we're going through. And so, like, it takes a nation. And so if we could build a nation of mentors that really have the passion and desire to help other people, then any problem that comes our way that one of our mentees may experience, we could task a mentor to say, hey, I need you to work with this student because you've been there. Show them the ropes and make sure that they don't go left, but they go right. Right. I th you know what I charge that to uh, back in the day? Um, wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we don't use that word. That's what you really just described. Mm -hmm. It's wisdom. Um, sharing our wisdom, our experience, yeah. evolve into what becomes wisdom. Yeah. And um, a lot of the older generation, like my mom's generation, my guy, my, you know, the 60, you know, those who are like 60, 65, around that age now, and even prior to that, I can re refer back or think back when your grandmother would always tell you stories mm -hmm. and was sharing wisdom with you so that, one, you didn't make those same mistakes yep. that they made mm -hmm. or knowing that you're going to go through your own life experiences, um, still share some wisdom as to how they got through. You mm -hmm. know, because, again, like you said, our story isn't for us. It's to help somebody else. Yeah. So that's why we always have to push and press no matter what we go through and what we face yes. on a regular basis. Um, we're going to be helping somebody else along the way. And so you mentioned uh, you started your mentoring program, and one of your um, missions or your focus points um, in becoming a mentor in our life experiences. Mm -hmm. Can you share with my viewers today some of your experiences that got you to the point where you wanted to give back? Yep. Um, so Imagine is has been operating for about seven years okay, and uh, consistently, and um, it focuses on three components. It focuses on relationship building, career readiness, and it also focuses on increasing self-esteem. And so those are the three components that we really, um, really, really, really uh, focus on because in order for you to sustain a job, you need to have confidence in yourself. Absolutely. You need to love yourself and have self-esteem that's high enough so that you can go in and, you know, be confident about who you are. And so teaching the work readiness skills to our students, you know, just so not only they get the job, but they actually sustain the job. That's like right. That's critical. Um, the relationship piece of it, I mean, it's not just boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Nowadays, it's girlfriend-girlfriend relationships, right. or it's relationships in the household with the parents. You know, I'm learning this year um, that a lot of the mentees that I work with primarily have issues with their parents. And so it's like, how do we get you to a place where you understand that you need to honor thy father and thy mother that your days may be long. Not theirs, right. but yours. And so um, some of the stuff that we do, we kind of ground them with the word so that they understand, like, look, this is not something that I'm coming up with. Okay. This is something that has been embedded in me through my parents, who I have great relationships with, right. you know, um, that 
that has helped me and shaped me into the person that I am because I listened, you know. So right. the wisdom that your parents or grandparents may have given you, some people didn't listen. But I listened because I realized that the reason why I had to listen was so that I could take that information and regurgitate it to somebody else. Yeah. You know, but, but... With me working with young people, um, teaching parenting classes, and just doing a number of things throughout my career, I think oftentimes we forget that we were once children. When you talk about parents, the things that the children are going through these days, now some of the stuff is way different. Like we wouldn't dare try our parents with some of the things that yes. the young people um, try their parents with nowadays situations. But times have changed. Um, and, I, and I say that in the sense you have parents who are working all day. You have children that are taking care uh, of the household yes. because mom and or dad have to work. Mm -hmm. And so in those situations, and I, I think I mentioned this on another show, we put children in position sometimes to be the adult yes. because you're managing, you're taking care of your children. Yep. But then when they come to school, or, for example, getting a mentoring program where, wow, this is an opportunity for me to receive some help and yep. some love yep. and things like that. But it's not an easy revert back. That's you right. can't automatically just revert back when you've been put in a position of authority to a degree. Mm -hmm. And then you want them to revert back as a child once they get to school. But they've been taking care of their family, their siblings, and holding yep. the house down. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for any parent that may be going through you know, even when you're doing your mentoring thing, um, to understand that you have to remember, one, things are different. Uh, remember, you only know your household. Yeah. And you got to kind of reflect back and really do some assess self-assessment yeah. as to how you're rearing and raising your children. Yeah. And I understand. Parents have to do what they have to do. I get it. Like, times are really hard, and we do the best, the very best that we can. But a child still should be able to be a child. And so... That's the one thing I teach in the sessions when they walk in the door. I say, look, any issues that you have before I t put this in you, I need you to leave it where it is. Simply because I need your mind to be open so that you can learn whatever it is that I'm trying to give you. Because these nuggets I'm giving you, if, you the, if you're the authority over your younger siblings, the stuff that I'm teaching you, you can teach them. But if you right. have a closed mind and you're not focused, there's no way you're going to get it. Right. So this is an opportunity for you to be as selfish as you need to be for this hour or two hours that we're here. So I always tell them, you have to put yourself in a position to make yourself a priority. Because if you don't do it, then who's going to do it right. right and so you got to be able to at least take that time out for yourself so that you can grow and develop into the person that you're ultimately designed to be wow you know it, it just takes me back to uh people i talk to today um on a regular basis um i asked a group of ladies on yesterday i'm at work i said who is the most important person to you and i maybe have one or two that said themselves mm -hmm. And the others were their children. And so I appreciate the fact that you are helping one understand that you are the most important person. You can be selfish in yeah. this mentoring program and let it be all about you. Yeah. Because I have an issue, well, not necessarily an issue, but I think it's important to educate people on how important it is to love yourself yes. um, so much that you are that phenomenal person that can help your children. Yep. Because if all your emphasis is on making your child happy mm -hmm. and doing whatever it takes to make them happy, mm -hmm. what happens to your happiness? That's right, because you can't be any good to that child if you're not good to yourself. And so Absolutely. the one thing I even ask people, adults, young adults, when was the last time you looked in the mirror? Not looked in the mirror and played with your eyebrows and looked at your lashes and did, did <laughs> right. your thing, but when was the last time you actually looked at yourself and said, you know what, regardless of everything that I went through or going through, I still love me. Mm -hmm. Like, when did you do that? When did you embrace the adversity that you experienced and said, you know what, I'm still standing, I'm still here, I'm still grinding, I'm still working, I still love me. Like. Everything that we go through in life happens because it's supposed to happen. Everything is in divine order. That's the right. things that we experience shapes us into the people that we're supposed to be. And so if people grasp that, I think that would be life changing for them. And so when you do take that time out for yourself to be selfish, it's okay. You don't have to feel bad that you're taking that time out for yourself. And then when you do look in the mirror and you see your flaws, it's okay. Embrace them because that's who you are. I mean, Absolutely. what are you to do? Yeah, I think what is a challenge for people and makes them uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, is talking about their flaws. Sure. And then before I forget this thought, 
you, it's so funny that you would mention that mirror thing. So after I asked the ladies about who the most important person was to them, it's one of my favorite songs. It's called Mirror by Layla Hathaway. It's an awesome song. Mm -hmm. Layla Hathaway, Mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just it's, it's telling you no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've gone through, embrace yourself. Look in that mirror and love on you. Yes. And it's so easy to do yep. for some. Yep. If you're so caught up in um, beating yourself down because of the mistakes that you made, uh, because you're at an age where you haven't accomplished the things that you want to accomplish, it's easy. You know, it's a natural thing to, to do. Yeah. But with this song, and I had them listen to it maybe a good three times because I wanted it to marinate, um, I wanted them to marinate on it and really listen to the words. And then after that, how are you feeling? And so then I began to t just give them tools, you know, look in the mirror and, and lift yourself up. Yeah. You know, it's easy to have others encourage you. Like I know, I'm quite sure you do in your sessions, you know, lifting people up and telling them you're a great woman and, or a great young man mm -hmm. and golly, you have your leadership skills and all of those great things. Mm -hmm. But then when they fall off and they no longer want to give you those compliments, then what? Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to be reassuring yourself yeah. at all times. So what you're doing in your mentoring, and I'm hopeful that you're teaching your other mentors to do the same, um, is giving them tools mm -hmm. to be better people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And once we get the tools, yeah. we're changing our selves, yeah. which eventually will change our community. I'm just a hopeful person that things will get better in our mm -hmm. community, they will. especially with people like you. Thank you. And, and myself and other people in the community just trying to uplift one another and encourage them along the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But you know, the one question I do get is, you pour into so many people so much. Who pours into you, right? And so, like, and that's a, that's a good question. I mean, that's even a good question for those who take care of the kids and they're constantly running around doing a million and 55 things. Like, who takes care of you, right? And so, the deliverance is in the Word of God. That's it. Like, everything that you need is in the Bible. Every reassurance that you need does not have to come from man. It can come from God. Right. And it's right there in the Word. You are beautiful. You are wonderfully made. You are fearful. Like, all of these things... Mm -hmm is in the word right you know and so it's like i don't have to run to a person for validation because many people do run to other people val for validation and so i try and teach that that you don't have to run to man to get validation right. the bible says it is better to trust in the lord than to put confidence in man right so i'd rather trust in the lord knowing that the word never returns void okay it never returns void and so everything that i read everything that i know mm -hmm. i know that it's true because i know it came from god yeah because we are God. We, 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 we are supposed He's to be a us. reflection mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. we, you know, God is love. God is all those yes. things you just described. So yep. that's who we are, and that's who we, em we are to emulate. Yep. Um, but what about the ones who are not into the word? Yep. Like, I mean, you know, so you say you, you base your things off the word. Mm -hmm. um, but what about the ones who don't relate? You know, because some what people do don't do want to go in the church. They, they, I don't want to go near a church. And so my problem is not in the church. You know, I'm going to pull you out the church and I'm going to put the church in you, okay. you know, and so I don't have to put it in you through scripture. Okay. You That's know, what I was um, about. you know, how the Bible says, you know, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things. You can do anything that you want, Absolutely. you know, and so it's still the same thing, you know, and then what happens is when you start pouring it into them that way, then they get the hunger and the thirst for God. And then, oh, now you're interested. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come go on a trip with me to church? You know, because... At the end of the day, we've lost our minds because we are so far away from God. Like, he is the one that establishes our mind. He is the one that keeps us in perfect peace. The reason why we don't have peace is simply because we're so removed from his word. We don't really know, and we don't have what, the tools that we need to be um, successful because we don't understand that it doesn't come from people, but it comes from him. Yes, and God does give us everything yes. that we need. Yep. Um, and so that is important. Yes. So let's talk a little bit um, about um, relationships. Okay. Um, you, you, you mentor on the college campuses. Yeah. You, you mentor younger. What are some of the things that they're dealing with, mm -hmm. and how are, you, how are you dealing or helping them to deal with those type of issues? Because college is a whole nother level, yes. right? So yes. they're finding themselves. Um, they are um, trying to figure out which clique I want to 
be with? Do I want to be a loner? Yeah. You know, so how, how do you, one, introduce your program yeah. so that it becomes, you know, exciting and something they want to get involved in. And mm-hmm. then what are some of the issues that they are facing? Okay. So the way that I introduce my program, it's all social media. It's all word of mouth. It's all about who's been in the program. Let me pull somebody else along the way because the premises of Imagine is, Whatever you learn, I need you to give it to somebody else, you know, and if you can't give it to them the way that you, it was given to you, I need you to bring them along so that they can get it. And so the goal is really to kind of just pull people in based off of somebody that has already experienced the program. Um, we are shifting to a place where we're going to be doing um um, boot camps this summer so um what kind it's gonna of be boot set camps? up yeah it's gonna be like a um a self-esteem a relationship and career readiness boot camp and we're gonna serve ages 14 to 18 and that's gonna start in june so imagine just um has a new partnership with the 10th precinct so we're gonna be working with them and they're gonna provide the space for me to, to do these sessions um awesome. on the weekends and it's gonna be open to the detroit community so there are opportunities for people to come and be a part of that and so we're gonna be able to um work through the self-esteem issues, the relationship issues, the work readiness, um, preparing you so that you can be a taxpaying citizen and not a tax burden. Awesome. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. And also um, starting next month, actually a month today, today, it'll be April 21st, I'm starting the Imagine Princess program. So a princess, a princess program. A princess. Oh, Imagine, Imagine what, Princess. So it's going to work with like? ages four to eight. And so wow. I have a four-year-old daughter. And so the inheritance for me to give to my daughter is Imagine. And so I want to start training her now because the Bible said train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's older, he won't depart from it. And so I want to be able to train her um, at the age of four so that she understands the morals and values that this is your inheritance. I'm pouring all of this into you so that it's my hope you would take this and pour it into somebody else, you know, as you go older. Now, I can't make her do it, but it's something that Absolutely. I want her to be surrounded around. Um, and so we're going to be starting to serve ages four to eight, moving into another program that's going to serve ages nine to 13. And then I'll serve the 14 to 18. So that way we can track our girls from, from the little age all the way up to their getting bigger. And we're going to duplicate that program for the boys as well. Girl. It's a lot. Yeah. I'm it's a lot of work. I mean, and it's okay. <laughs> like yeah. I am just excited. Um, and, and, and I know, this is gonna go way over the top like mm-hmm. you, you it's in you you know it's it's a heart space for you yes. you can feel it when you talk mm-hmm. that you're very passionate and you're not just in it for the sake of being and doing something yeah. that is but it's a part of you and you really your goal is, is to change lives you know i've never i've life. never had any money for this event for this program and okay. I and I never talk about that. Like it's a nonprofit organization. People make donations and things like that. But I haven't went after like any grant dollars or anything like that. Like my heart is in it, you mm-hmm. know. So most of the time, I'm funding out my pocket, or people will just come through. Like I got you. Let me support this because I know you've been doing it for a long time. So I know that it'll work simply because it's not me. That's it. It's not my. It's it's all him, you know. I know it's not me, and so I'm just grateful for the fact that the opportunity that he actually trusted me to do this, mm-hmm. and so. Um, people would always come to me and say, this is bigger than you. And I'm like, dude, I know. Like, there is no way I'm going to be able to do all of this by myself. So that's why I am so grateful for a team of people. I'm grateful for people that want to come on board, uh, right. people that want to help. But the the thing is, is that um, the one thing I run into is people that want to do it because they want to have get the accolades or they want to have the yeah. – um, they got their own ill intentions. Yes. And so I thank God for the spirit of discernment because now I know – people that come in the space of it it's like i'm around people and we changing lives like if your heart not in it to do it the right way that's right now. and you trying to find a dollar sign to do this for like this ain't what it is right if you're not really here to serve and and love on people because they need it and they're not getting it from home mm-hmm. this ain't it for you that is so so important because yeah. i was going to ask you and we got to get ready to wrap up sure let I don't know if you heard about my last show. I went a little bit longer. Okay. And I forgot the time, and I was just talking. <laughs> and But I thank the engineer again for allowing me to continue on. But um, I was going to ask you what well, we were talking about, college, mm-hmm. and um, you changing the lives of yes. young adults yep. there and some of the things that they, they go were, through. Yeah, yep. they were going through. I, I wanted you to hit on that yep. real quick. And then also uh, how does one get involved in your mentoring program good question so um when they're on a college campus this this is what i'm running into um i ran into this guy first guy that ever said i love you first guy that just really shows me that he loves me because i never had a father figure you know and so the first man that comes into my life to say i love you that's what i'm gonna latch on to and it's like wait (laughs) right it's a whole world out here 
You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to deal with that. So even that one space of you being abused, yeah. like, are you going to accept that simply because he was the first one that said, I love you? Like, no. You know, so I run into a lot of that. A lot of people just accept and they just deal with mm -hmm. relationships yeah. just to say they got a man. For the sake or of the, being with the man, sake right. They say they got a whole bunch of women. You know, I deal with a lot of a young men who don't choose to have protected sex. So working through that, you know, they don't understand that. Detroit, right, is one of the cities that is at the top of the list for sexually transmitted diseases. Right. What are you doing? That's right. You know, so wake up. Stuff like that. Um, we're teaching at the college on the campuses, or even at Job Corps to students that um, are ages sixteen or twenty-four. We're trying to teach them to understand, like you have to protect yourself. You right. know, and so like you, you can't be out here. Uh, having sex with every everything that you see walking with some clean gym shoes on because you don't know what they're dealing with internally right you know wow. and so how do you get involved right yeah, how do you get involved yeah. as we close as we close <laughs> um so i'm i'm real real accessible um my email address is info at imaginementoring.com i-n-f-o at i-m-a-g-i-n-e m-e-n-t-o-r-i-n-g dot com my number is 844 Motown 4, so that's simple. And then my um, website is www.imaginementoring.com. Yes, and we're on Facebook Live. If you uh, were unable to catch the show and get that information, go back to my page, uh, pull it up. But you can also call in at 868-0342. And here at the studio, we can make sure that we get the information to you. I want to thank you again. Latanya for accepting the invitation yeah. just being a jewel in the community yeah. um, I wish you the best Thank you. you're already doing great things yeah. and I see great things to come so yeah. don't stop being a voice for those who don't have a voice yeah. and keep working and striving to change the community thank I want to thank the viewers for tuning in to DKD Truth Talk and I'll catch you on next Wednesday same time at 12 o'clock thank you have a great awesome rest of the week